Hey, how's it going? I'm Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and partner and CTO at Canvas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a hidden panel that only appears when you're editing your Power Apps. I like to use this hidden panel to store documentation about my Power App that I use either as a developer or operational folks will use it as they deploy a Power App. The reason I got the idea for this video is because even though I use this technique all the time with my team, I'd never really seen someone point it out and say, whoa, what was that? But that's exactly what happened during our May Power Apps community call a couple days ago. I saw Sandy reach out and chat and say, oh, that's clever or something along those lines. And then I had a couple people follow up with me on email and say, how'd you do that? I'd like to see more. So instead of shooting a bunch of emails back to people, I'd let them know that I would send a, out an email to them once I got the video done. Now I'm doing the video. So I hope you learned something from this and it becomes a handy toolbox uh, item that you can use as you develop your Power Apps too. Now let's get started. Alright, so here is the Power App that I was actually demonstrating on the Power Apps May community call. This Power App demonstrates how you can use Azure Blob Storage with Power Apps. And if you're curious about doing that, I encourage you to look at the video I have all about it on the YouTube channel here. Or you can watch uh, Shane and my discussion where we both showed a different app to describe the aspects of Azure Blob Storage with the Power App. But I'm not really going to focus on the Azure Blob Storage part today. What I am going to focus on is this pane that we see on the left side of the Power App here that I have surrounded with the dotted lines. So watch this. When I go ahead and I put this Power App in preview mode, or if I just ran it outside of the editor, it disappears. So that's the hidden pane that I'm talking about creating in this video. In this particular example, because I've made this Power App publicly available so people could use it to learn how to use Blob Storage on their own, I wanted a way for them to have documentation right inside the Power App. So as soon as they opened it up, they knew how to install it and getting it up and running. This is also a technique you can use as you roll Power Apps out in your own environment. You can have instructions just like this to tell your operations folks what they need to do to install this Power App. And you can also use this type of pane to putting debugging controls so that you can actually look at debugging information in your Power App without having to do anything but open it up in edit mode. So how do we go about creating it? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just start from scratch to create it. And I'm going to create a Canvas app from blank. I'm going to pick phone here because it'll be a little bit bigger and easier to see here. So I'm just going to call this one the Hidden Pane Power App and hit Create. And then once I have my Power App created, it's so easy on how we can create this control. I think you're going to be very pleased when you see this. So we start out and you can do this to any screen you want in the Power App. The first thing I'll do is go to Insert and then I'll pick Text and HTML text. So now my text is here. And so how do I get that text lined up where I want it to be? Well, the first thing that I like to do is go into the file menu and pick screen size and orientation. And I like to see how tall my Power App is. So this Power App happens to be 1136 pixels tall. So I'll keep that in mind. And now I'll come back here and I will go and edit the display properties on this. So I want this one to go all the way top to bottom on the left side of my Power App. So I'm going to pick 1136 for the height. The width, that's arbitrary. You can choose whatever you like for that as well as the height too. Now for the X coordinate, because this one right now is set to a width of 560, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that negative 561. Now you can see it appears off to the left, but 
it's not exactly lined up at the top. So instead, I'm just going to take the Y coordinate here and turn that into a zero. And now, bang, I have got myself a place where I can put my documentation or whatever else I'd like to do. Other things that you can do here, I mentioned our debugging controls. So perhaps I would like to have some documentation on this page of the Power App. And I would also like to have some debugging controls. So I can just adjust the height of this wherever I'd like it to be. And then let's say I'm going to add a label for debugging. You know, as I'm trying to drag it over to the left here, you can see my mouse moves off to the left, but it doesn't leave the actual design surface here. So again, I need to set the negative on this negative 561, make sure it's off the left side of the page. And now I have a place where I can place uh, debugging text. So perhaps the name of this control is label um, debug value. And inside of here, maybe I would like this one to display uh, this particular debugging control. I'd like it to display a certain value perhaps a variable or a count of something in my Power App. So let's pretend that I have a Power App here and it has a button. And whenever you click this button, something happens. And one of the things that happens in all the logic you do is that a variable gets set, just like this. So you have a global variable that gets set and then it gets a value assigned to it, right? And then you may have another button. And that button is also working with your data, but the logic inside of that button actually transforms whatever this variable is into something else, and it, it makes it value two. So now I've got one button. When I click it, the global variable is value. The other one is value two. I can now come back over to my debug value here, and I can make its text that um, that variable that I just created right over here, GLB var. So if I type that guy in, there it is. And now I go to play the Power App, and this is a common situation, right? You're working through your Power App. You want to see what values as you develop your Power App you've got. So a lot of times what developers do is they put these controls right here on the canvas of the Power App. But that just clutters up your UI and then you have to take it off or make it hidden and different logic like that. So instead of that approach, I'm, I'm going to click the top button and set that value, that variable. And now I close it. Now you can see I have value. And I can even leave it open and use the Alt button and click this here. Now I have value too. And then back to the top, we expect it to be value when I click. And now it's back to value. So this is a great way for you to use debugging inside of your Power Apps in a way that you can actually deploy this stuff right with your Power App and you don't have to have uh, extra documentation that goes along for the ride perhaps. And like I mentioned, when you're really running your Power App and debugging it or you run into a production issue, this gives you the opportunity to just open up that Power App in edit mode and really look what's happening under the scenes. Uh, so I really find this pattern helpful, and I hope that it works out really well for you too. Thanks again for watching the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Now go hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Would you like to work together sometime? We work with people all the time we meet on YouTube. Check me out at canvas.com. And if you'd like to see more cool videos about tech, especially power apps, you can check them out down here. I'll see you next time.